Throughout the ages, people have sent messages and greetings to one another. Before the postcard became commonplace, it was customary to send miniature paintings, delicate imitations of lace, and beautiful, often self-made cards. The first Finnish postage stamps were issued in 1856. Stamps were probably not much use because only every tenth man, and even fewer women in Finland, knew then how to write. The postcard was approved as an authorized form of correspondence in 1869 in Austria, and a year later in Germany. A. F. Griepenberry, director of Finland's postal service, wrote to the Emperor of Russia and proposed that postcards be introduced in Finland too. The proposal was approved for stationary cards that were franked with the words postage paid instead of carrying paper stamps. The address of the recipient was written on the front and the message on the back of the card. Initially, the cards were called letter cards. The 1881 decree on postal services named them postcards. The first Finnish letter cards were sent on October the 10th, 1871. Only two of such cards exist today. They were both sent by Zakris Topelius from Helsinki to his brother Oskar Topelius in Vasa. Sakaris wrote, No important news except these remarkable cards. These rare cards are from the Post Museum collections. The printing of pictures on cards also began at this time. German postcard publishers dominated the picture postcard market until the early 20th century. Postcards evolved into small works of art, and a lot of time and effort was put into making them. The printing method used was lithography, which gave the cards a high-quality finish. Towards the end of the 1880s, picture cards by Swedish artists began to appear on the market with themes that were familiar to Finns. One of the oldest topographical postcards sent in Finland is this card posted in Helsinki in 1890. Christmas and New Year cards in particular were popular. The popularity of cards grew further when postage rates fell in Finland and elsewhere in accordance with universal postal union agreements. Sending a postcard cost about half of the postage for a letter. In the 1890s, Russia tightened its grip on Finland. Postcards became a weapon against Russification, and political picture cards in particular gained popularity. The address lines and the national symbol were printed on the back of the card. Finland's coat of arms, with its crowned lion, was the country's emblem. Finnish photo postcards showing towns and landscapes also came onto the market in the 1890s. The designers of the first Finnish photo postcards were photographers Daniel Nublin, Carl Emil Stolberry, and I. K. Inha. For a long time, greetings were written on the picture side, because only the recipient's address was allowed on the reverse side. The postcard 
is an efficient means of communication. The first Finnish advertisement cards were printed as long ago as the late 19th century. Finland's industrialization was underway and a growing number of people could afford to buy more than just their daily bread. This was something that postcard publishers had noticed. Almost all well-known Finnish artists designed postcards. The import of cards from abroad also continued. Despite the huge selection, all cards were sold. In 1905, about 2.7 million cards were sent in Finland. Charitable organizations, too, noted the power of postcards long ago. This card, from 1912, was published by the Finnish Tuberculosis Association. The association used the income from sale of the card to place sick children from working-class families in Helsinki in care in the countryside. Tens of thousands of Finns emigrated, mostly to the United States, fleeing famine and growing Russian influence. The Finnish Americans were able to send postcards with Finnish captions to their former homeland because the expatriates included postcard publishers. Sending letters and cards from the battlefront started during World War II. Cards from the front could be sent free of charge. Many of these field post office cards were ready printed, but there were self-designed cards too. Between 1941 and 1945, more than 500 million letters and 90 million cards were sent from battle zones. The cards tell of the madness of war, of fear, and of homesickness. Greetings from the backwoods. I've managed to keep well so far. This battle is hard. The Russians are resisting strongly. In the 1960s, motoring and camping became popular pastimes for the whole nation. Roads improved, living standards rose, and there was more leisure time than before. Travel broadens the mind, it was said, and cards were sent showing sights at home and abroad. The fashion of flying to the warm and boozy Canary Islands owed much to tour operator Kalevi Keihanen. Postcards from distant places became objects of admiration and envy. Mummy, I swam all day yesterday. Love to all, Sanna. Hi, we would have loved to see you on this trip. We've been sunning ourselves and swimming. The booze is cheap. You can save as much as 200 marks a day if you drink enough. Mother's Day was created in 1905 by an American, Anne Jarvis. In Finland, Mother's Day has been celebrated since before World War II. 
Often Mother's Day cards are self-made, but printed greetings cards are also available. Father's Day is a fairly new invention created by retailers. A postcard is a good way of remembering your friends, and it's always a pleasure to receive cards. No doubt that's why Finns send approximately 50 million Christmas cards every year. Since 1987, Finns have been celebrating Valentine's Day. Finns send 5 million cards for Valentine's Day. It has become, after Christmas, the second most popular day for sending greetings cards in this country. A new worldwide hobby over the internet is post-crossing, in which Finns are among the keenest users. Many people like to both send and receive postcards. The idea in post-crossing is that for each card you send, you will receive one yourself from some part of the world. New ways of sending cards have been devised in recent years. The card is sent electronically, but the message itself is delivered to the recipient as a traditional friendly paper postcard. The e-postcard is sent via the internet, while a mobile postcard works through a mobile phone. You can use your own images to easily create a picture postcard and a stamp. The principle and philosophy behind a postcard has remained the same, to convey information and greetings. And the picture on a postcard is as much a message as a written greeting. Postikortti on pitänyt edelleenkin pintansa, vaikkakin 2000-luku on ollut aika voimakasta sähköistymistä. Ja uskomme edelleenkin, että postikortti vahvana elää, elää jatkossakin. Ja suomalaiset lähettävät noin 70 miljoonaa postikorttia vuodessa. Postikortin vahvuutena on, on sen ilahduttaminen. Se on kiva, kiva vastaanottaa, se lämmittää mieltä. Postikortti on persoonallinen, se on henkilökohtainen viesti. Joten tämä persoonallisuus ja henkilökohtaisuus on tämän postikortin valtteja.